When I first started my YouTube channel, I was known as the Duck Man. And the main reason for that is I was featured on Justin Rhodes' channel when he was doing the Great American Farm Tour. And he showed me working with my ducks. We gotta check out Mike, the Duck Man, putting away the ducks. Quack, 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 quack. Start looking, he's waving them on, waving them on. Stop right there, quack, quack. Look. That easy. I wish you could herd chickens that easy. Look. Look, Mr. Brown. Okay, you can follow him in. Follow him in. Come on. Follow him in. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come on. Uh oh. Hey, Mr. Brown. Can you make a duck sound? Can you make a duck sound like Mr. Mike? Uh, wait, wait. Uh, Can you go wait, wait? Wait, wait. Wait, wait. Can you go wait, wait? Wait, wait. Do it. Here we go. Do it. Quack, quack. Quack, quack. And since then, I've become known for a number of other things like living in a yurt, having a market garden, raising other animals like chickens and goats but also known as the fit farmer. But you know what? I am still crazy about raising ducks. I still love ducks. They're one of my favorite animals to have here on the homestead. And when I first started raising ducks, we did it primarily for egg production. We focus on egg breeds like Khaki Campbell's. However, over the past two years, I've really been trying to raise ducks also for meat. And whenever we're starting new flocks here, we try to start from a breeder or getting them from a hatchery. So we get chicks and ducklings from either a breeder or hatchery. And in the case with our ducklings here, we got them from Murray McMurray Hatchery. And then when they arrive, we go pick them up at the post office and then we bring them home and introduce them to our brooder. We have a heat lamp set up and we have pine shavings for them and just make it really nice and cozy for them to live in. And one of the things that I started using in our brooder this year is a heat plate, which is a lot safer to use and the ducklings and chicks really seem to like it. And while they're in the brooder, we're giving them feed and water each day. And the feed we get from a local feed mill farm right around the corner, not too far from us. And you may have one in your area too. But if you don't, you can always go to a store like Tractor Supply. And a lot of times they have a grower starter feed that you can feed your birds. And one of the things about ducklings is they grow really fast, a lot faster than chicks. So I don't recommend raising them together because we've done that in the past and the ducklings will just really be like these monsters compared to the chicks and can start squashing them. So you don't want that. So we try to keep our ducklings separate from our chicks. But once they're ready to go outside, which is usually around three to four weeks, we take them outside and put them in a chicken tractor or a duck tractor to where they will live out the remainder of their lives. And as I'm moving them outside, we transport them in these crates, which really come in handy. And anything that I mentioned in this video, make sure you check out the show notes below if you're interested in any of these items, like the crates that we're using right here. So we'll put the ducklings in the crates, move them outside, and then take them out of the crate and put them in the chicken tractors. And the meat ducks will be in the chicken tractor or duck tractor up until they're ready to be processed. But we've also raised them in electrified netting, which is what we did with this batch here. And they also worked out really well. And then at around seven or 14 weeks is when you should process your Pekin ducks, because this is the time frame in which they're going to be molting and that is beneficial because it's gonna help with removing their feathers so much easier when you're processing them. And about a year ago, I did a really detailed video on how to process 
ducks. I'm not going to cover that in today's video, but if you want to see that one, make sure you check it out. In this one, I'm just going to give a rough overview on what we do. So for those of you who are worried, it's not going to be a really graphic video. So it's okay. This is just going to be an overview. Well, when we're setting up the process, I fill up my Cajun rocket pot that we use as a scalder. Turn on the propane tank. Ignite it and heat it up from anywhere from 130 to 170 degrees. I personally really like around 155, 160. I think that it works best for me. That's just me. And with ducks, we add soap to the water. And with processing ducks, we also use wax. We take our tub, fill it up with some water. Heat it up and then add wax to it. After we have everything all set up, we go get the ducks. So as you can see here, the crates come in handy once again. And before we begin butchering, something that's really important to me that we do is pause for a moment, give God thanks, and ask His blessing on the whole process. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, great and mighty God, we thank you for all the wonderful gifts that you give us. Thank you for calling us to a relationship with you. And Father, we know as a part of that relationship, you show to us um, uh, our need and also our sins and, and uh, we know that for our life to continue that we must, the sacrifices must be made and, and uh, we thank you for these animals that provide us with the physical substance that we need and uh, we know that it's just a, the shadow of things that point to Jesus Christ that gives us eternal life for life to come and uh, we just ask your blessing on this process that we do today this processing pray that everything would go well and we would have the most enjoyable time that we can with doing this and and uh, that the, these, these ducks would go through providing us with uh, good nourishment. In Jesus' name, amen. And then we begin. Since I'm the one that primarily raises the ducks, I like to be the one that dispatches them. I feel like it's my responsibility. So after they're gone, I take them to the scalder, which loosens up their feathers to come out. From there, I'll take them and put them in the plucker, which removes the feathers. And then from the plucker, I take them over to the wax, which is the station that Lacey mostly manages. She'll dunk the carcass in the hot wax. And then from the hot wax, she'll dump it into cold water to make the wax harden. And then from there, she'll pull the wax, the hardened wax, off the carcass, which will pull out the remaining feathers that didn't come out from the plucker. Uh, 
How's it going over there? It's going. One of the other things that you could do is you could also skin it, but we like to keep the skin on the bird so that way when we're cooking it, that really helps the, the bird and the meat to have the flavor that we want it to have. And then from the wax station, it goes to the evisceration station. And then after they've been eviscerated, we'll put them in a chill bath or an ice bath where they'll be anywhere from 12 to 48 hours. And this helps loosen up the muscles so that way they'll be even tender and even better when you eat them. So from there, we'll either store them in our freezer or you can eat them fresh. So that's kind of a general overview of how I've been raising my meat ducks from start to finish. My goal now is to be able to actually start having a breeding program where we can reproduce on our own and don't have to go to the hatchery or breeder every time that we want to get new flocks. So this past year, we cleared out an area that we can have set up for permanent duck areas to where we can begin working on our individual breeds. And with our recent batches of Pekin ducks, we've been selectively picking a few here and there that we wanna save to reproduce from. So recently, we moved those Pekin ducks, as well as some Muscovies and our guard goose, Greg, down to those areas that are designated for our breeding operation. All right, so we're gonna do a little bit of a duck shuffle here. We got two Pekin ducks in here, as well as Greg, our guard goose. And uh, just to avoid any problems, instead of moving the ducks first, since Greg is so attached to them, we're gonna move Greg first, so he won't be so mad at us if we took the, the ducks away first. So we're gonna move him, and then move the Pekins to be with the other Pekins that we have down by the pond. Buddy. Right. Oh, oh, there we go. We got your big guy. Oh. Oh. Ooh, it's heavy. It's all right, buddy. Carry him on down. We first attempted to put the Muscovies with one of our flocks of chickens. However, we quickly realized that that wasn't going to work because the chickens were attacking the ducks. So we had to catch them again and do something else. Nobody don't have that problem. Those chickens definitely didn't like you guys in there. So you're normally the aggressor. So uh, let's try a different area. So right now it's going okay down here. They're not coming after the ducks. I believe the, these Muscovies were with this flock of chickens earlier this year. So hopefully they remember each other. Uh, and sometimes there is a working out of pecking order and, and it, it may be harsh to us, but they do have it. But there's also an extreme where they're actually abusing them and will end up killing them, which is what I was thinking would happen up there. That was just really a lot more, more, more violent, more aggressive than than I would like to see for, for that. So um, definitely decided to move them down here because of that. All right, and now let's go get Greg's other two friends, the Pekins that are up there at the top.
Well, now that all that's done, hopefully we can start incubating eggs from them here really, really soon. So super excited about that. So have that going on. On top of all that, I mentioned earlier about that area just being cleared out. Ducks have really done a good job of just mowing it down. Now we gotta actually pull some mulch in there, as I mentioned earlier. And then on top of that, here in the next week and a half or so, we have some more meat ducks coming. So make sure you stay tuned for that. So a lot happening with my ducks. Like I told you at the beginning, I'm still pretty excited about my ducks. And for those of you who are really interested in unedited, seeing more just detailed versions of how we process ducks, we're gonna be sharing a video on Abundance Plus showcasing some of that. There's a lot of good stuff on there that just can't be shown on YouTube because YouTube doesn't like some of that stuff. So make sure you check out Abundance Plus and I'll leave that information in the show notes below where Justin Rhodes as well as myself and a num number of others just have really in-depth videos that just get censored and YouTube doesn't like. So make sure you check that out. See you next time.